Hello everyone, my name is Ray, and today we're here to play some more Tales of Berseria. This is part number 72. Thank you all for joining me for today's episode. And I'm not even sure if we're going to get to Melchior this episode. I know last time he was standing up there somewhere. Uh, talking trash, telling us to come up and get him. Margulis said it was a trap. It is a trap. But uh, first thing we're going to do is go to the expedition, as always. Uh, nothing too... We're still waiting for the special, that's what it is. Okay. But yeah, no, I'm not even sure we're going to get to Melky on this episode because this place is longer than I think it is, I'm pretty sure. I haven't done any testing or anything like that, but new enemy, why not? The Igniter Mole, weakness is water, obviously. Well, not obviously, because they have done this type of stuff before, but, um, yeah, no, his weakness is water. In a lot of places like this, you can just assume that his weakness will be water, but that's not always the case. Well, we've only got one guy left already. This fight is not taking as long as I thought it would take. Get him so I don't just end up at one HP. How's everybody doing today, by the way? You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. I um, other new enemies, but we don't have to fight them just yet. I'm looking for those lizard dudes. I'm not sure why. There they go. Sure, why not? Lizard paladin. We may as well start it with a freaking dangerous encounter. Why not? No reason not to. If we can get some good experience points and, and uh, gain a level in this episode. Why not? Yeah, I know. This episode's behind. It was supposed to be up yesterday. I realized this. Um, it's, it wasn't up yesterday, though. Again, this is my job. I had my uh, stuff all set up to record and everything. And then I ended up basically having to pull a double at two different stores. And it was irritating. But, you know, we got past it. Anyway. Enough of the complaints. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to actually do some stuff and enjoy myself while I do it, which is what I do. That's what I do. I have fun. I really do hope that you guys enjoy what you do, no matter what it is. I don't care what your job is. I don't care what your career is. I don't care what you're trying to do. I hope you enjoy yourself while you do it. Otherwise, what's the point? It's absolutely not fun at all if you're just going around doing it. I wonder if, um, I wonder if Dial could have become one of these guys, like, if given the opportunity, if, like, maybe you would have evolved over time, so to speak. That's a, that's an interesting thing that I've always kind of thought of about Hysteria and Berseria, these two Tales games. Why are we getting so many more points? Topaz Dog. Gonna use his quartz as a mana catalyst. Alright, let's see if that's worth a crap. It's not terrible, actually. Increases her attack and her physical defense. It lowers her art attack, though, by about 50. Yeah, but just over 50, so no, we're not gonna mess with that for now. Go this way, because I'm pretty sure there is... Yep, there we go. Okay. You know, it's, it's irritating when you have Mithril Doll. Okay, so Magi is just getting all the spoils in this episode. Increases her attack and her art defense. Uh, again... That increases their physical attack by a lot. Increases their art defense by 60. Oh, it's just to me, it's just it's just not worth it losing that much of her art attack. These dudes are going to be all over the place. I think I don't think they were in the other area. At least we didn't see them. I'm pretty sure they weren't. Um, they've switched the enemies around for these two places. Like I said, the whole fire and ice trope um, down there. They were a lot more aquatic looking frigid, iced up enemies, so to speak. I, I really have no idea why that's used so often in, in games in general, not just RPGs. Fire and ice are polar opposites, so maybe that's something to do with it. It's like, oh, it's cool, we can make it work, but it's like, it was impressive or innovative or whatever, like, the first time. Like, the hundredth time you've seen it in the game, it's, it's, it's not really that interesting anymore. Now, I guess um, that could be said to be incorrect, depending on how they do it. But yeah, no, I don't know. Oh, by the way, I don't know who's. What the hell? I forgot about that. I don't know um, who this is supposed to be. I don't even know what the hell game it's from. But I'm gonna switch her outfit. Um, I like the black dress one. Why not? Now the hairstyle. I don't know why that counts as a hairstyle. I mean, I know I know why they do that. But. We'll just keep that our normal style. I don't know. It looks nice. Now we're going to fight this guy. 
But you can see over there, there's another version of him that's that stupid. We saw it before. Don't waste my time. We're also weak to one. Yeah, power hits doing less than 50 damage. But the non power hits were doing 117. How does that make sense? Yo, this game is weird. And and it's and it's of course I know why that is. Um, the reason why they go by that is because that's it, they're split up in certain things. A power hit is a is a hit that you get off of on the enemies that are their weakness, I believe. The homie just got up. As opposed to, you know, regular hits, maybe I didn't hit it with his weakness or whatever, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be stronger. Yeah, we're going to open this one now because I don't want to have to come back. Angel Wings, I'll take it. But we leave it. Okay! Soul to awaken the elemental Empyreans. Are you alright, Velvet? I'll eat Melchior, and our collection will be complete. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you. You collapsed after the thing with Teresa and Oscar, remember? Uh, you wonder if I'm fine after eating Shigure. It's not a problem. But wasn't Shigure a lot more powerful than they were? But look at me. I'm fine, right? Does it seem like I'm faking it? No. I think I'm just used to it. Both my body and mind. You're not just used to it. You've changed. Mm hmm? Just as I changed after finding my free will, you've gotten stronger through our travels, too. You faced down many sorrows and hardships and overcame them all. Did I, though? You did. And that's why I... Ah. I'll make you a quiche later. Could you make pudding, too? Sure. But are you just trying to butter me up so I'll cook for you? Well, I mean... Uh, yeah. How did you know? You really have grown a lot, haven't you? All right, let's go and find me some Melchior to eat. Yeah! <laughs> I like how he's so into it all of a sudden. He just wants his damn pudding. Yeah, but no. Fire and ice, interesting trope. Come up here to grab all the giddy clumps, my dude. And, whoo! Actually, we don't have that... Huh, we've got a pretty decent amount considering what we just did. And we still haven't seen the freaking... What is it called? The Geo Tree? That thing still hasn't shown up yet. Alright, let's get into another freaking game just to kind of hope that we don't die. We've been doing alright, actually, the last couple episodes. Uh, I know for a while there, pretty much all I wanted to get in was Dangerous Encounters. And then, for a while there, I kind of just stopped getting into Dangerous Encounters. No real reason why it could be argued that I was worried that I was going to die. Because, obviously, as we get further in the game, the enemies get stronger. And they get stronger by comparison, too. They, they grow at a rate that kind of surpasses the rate that we are able to grow unless we sit down and grind for a couple hours. And I don't really have time to do all that stuff. Between trying to make sure my freaking lawnmower works and trying to make sure that I actually know when I'm showing up to work. By the way, I was supposed to open today. It is uh, 12.32. For those of you who don't know, when I open my store, I'm supposed to be there at 6.45 in the morning. And you don't leave until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes 5 in the afternoon when you open the store. Uh, but I was notified in the middle of the freaking night via text messaging, so they were lucky that I checked. Because, well, I was already awake. It was like 3 a.m. Long story short, I ended up checking my phone because it's usually on uh, silent or vibrate. So if you guys text me or call me or whatever now and then, so that's why, although I don't think any of you have my number, I don't see why you would. But regardless, my phone tends to be on silent or vibrate. So I just randomly checked my phone at like 3.20 something in the morning. No mercy indeed, little one. And I got a text message from my, one of my bosses saying, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah has something that needs to blah, blah, blah. So can you, you know, we need you to blah, blah, blah. We need you to open. I mean, we need you to open. We need them to open and you to close for them. Hey, look, these are the kitty clowns you saw at the beginning of the episode if you were paying attention. Say spot. But yeah, I was like, well, sure. Like, how, how you gonna just text somebody and there were no calls or nothing? How you gonna text someone at 3 in the morning? Talking about, hey, I know you're usually... You're, you have to be at work in about three and a half hours. But instead, 
we want you to it's different because of the time like if they had text me at 2 p.m. it was like hey do you mind letting so-and-so close tonight while you go off and just have the day off and then work their shift tomorrow you know it's different three in the morning to a 6 a.m. shift 6 30 a.m. shift 6 45 a.m. shift 6 50 a.m. shift whenever the hell you end up getting there oh it's so weird but no I genuinely hope everyone's all right now we're back in the cave these bats are still here I think those I think those are the only enemies that appear in both of these areas and look at how ridiculously long this one is it's not a maze it's kind of like a straight shot we still haven't seen that geo tree what why would they give us the geo tree we're gonna be going over to the other side over there too in a little bit Probably get into a couple of fights on the way. Pick up that 11,500 gold. I'll take it. Moving on up. Getting things done. Because that's the way we do things here. I'm not exactly sure. But I think the geo tree is... The next area, I'm pretty sure we go outside, so to speak. And then once we go back inside... To go back inside, I'm pretty sure the GOG is over there. We're actually relatively close to the end of this place. Was there an item over here? There was. Yo, I went back and uh, replayed that fight with Shigure just to see if it was... Um, if there are more things you could have done. I do kind of... I like and dislike the fact that his Mystic Art is basically completely cancelled out. Because every time he tried to do it in that fight, he tried to do it three times on me. He did it once in the in the video that I made for y'all but he tried it three different times for me while I was recording it while well, playing through it again and every single time uh, Rokuro just stopped it he just walked up and blocked it now that's a show of how much stronger Rokuro has gotten so I appreciate that but at the same time it's like dude what's the point of giving him a mystic guard if he's only gonna be able to use it in the first fight that we fight him on over back on that island and oh speaking of that island I don't know if y'all remember um, I went back into that I went into that cave at one point to try and find the item for the what is it called? The Mega Elixir for uh Oh my god, what is his name? Videl. And I couldn't find it, it wasn't there. I believe it's because I have to advance the storyline just a little bit. I think I have, I might have said that at one point, but no, that I pretty much confirmed. Now I go back and it's not I go back and it's not there, then obviously I was wrong. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Oh, please, thank you. Sorry to cut you down. Yo, I lost all my soul. Finger of God. Brace of the cold upon the touch of the creator. Okay, well, that should increase his attack in some form. Topaz. Okay, so that increases his art attack by a lot. But he's mainly a physical attacker, so we're not going to use it. That, I mean, they're bracelets, but I, I don't know. I don't know if they were just trying to give him a somewhat unique method of attacking or what, but he's literally just punching. Now, those bracelets seem to be just be ways of like augmenting his strength, so to speak. But I, I don't know. It just seems a little weird that they would give him bracelets as weapons. Then again... Um, Man, Eleanor is just going nuts with the daggone Mystic Cards in this episode. Yeah, I don't know. When I was younger, I never really understood why the, uh... Oh, it's just the barrier. I was wondering why the hell that rock... Really, I completely missed him with that. When I was a kid, I never really understood why they used to say the names of their attacks and they did it. It always seems stupid to me. You're just letting your opponent know what you're about to do. Why don't you just stop? This fight is over. Well, then, I educated myself. Direct appeal paperwork. A collection of appeal forms never submitted due to various typos and erroneous grammar. The animosity contained within them is quite legible, however. What the hell? What? What is this? This has an art attack value of 81. 
has an R attack value of nothing. Okay, I'm an idiot. That's why. Yo, look at that. Oh, but it, it decreases his defense by a lot, though. We'll rock with it. Oh, speaking of rocking with it. Let's make it happen. Now, let me talk to you, my friend. I just want to have a conversation. That's all this is. You and me, we're going to talk. Why are you running from me? How come every time I want to talk to someone, they just disappear? What the hell? I don't appreciate that. It's disrespect. Yo, the Melchior fight is really interesting. Not necessarily because of the fight. I mean, it is, but not necessarily because of the fight, but because of the fact that, um, like, the cutscenes that happen during and after, I just, I love them. You guys will see what I mean. I mean, you may not agree with them, but you'll see. Can you? This will just run up and start it just mass shanking me. What the hell was that? Like, that, that was a legit... That was a legit attack. That wasn't just him stabbing me multiple times. That was an actual attack and everything. Piss off, you stupid bat. Yo! Leave me be. Y'all can really get it if you want to, but just... I need I need to do some exploring first. I need to check some shit out. Where'd the other bat go? Come on. Really? There we go, gentlemen. We may as well go all the way. Ain't none of this half, ain't none of this half or quarter length crap. We're going 100% or we're not going at all. It's been a while since I... Why is everyone using Mystic Arts left, right, and center? Speaking of... So there's that. But, um... Correct. Oh, come on now, you stole my kill. That's that nonsense, yo. These bats are, are good for getting souls, though. They're not, uh, they don't have a whole lot of life. Can you? Thank you. I'm, I'm all kinds of... Okay, I'm all kinds of confused as to why the... Just die. And I know I don't have to use this as much as I do, but I enjoy her Therian form. It's fun! Are you the last one? No, you're the last one. Good work. All right, I'll take it. I never seen her say that before. Um, I wonder if that's got something to do with the outfit that she's got on, or what? Or maybe it's just this point in the game. It's kind of a rare one. I'm not sure what Melchior is really capable of. What kind of man is he? To put it short, he's the Exorcist's shadow. Their shadow. They're supposed to be free of malevolence, but they're only human, and so are those who they want to save. But sincerity and conviction alone won't save the world. To remain free of malevolence, they need someone to do their dirty work. A shadow. I see. And that's Melchior's job. During all my time at the Abbey, I was never aware of what he was really doing. So, why hasn't he succumbed to malevolence? Because his belief in the exorcists as the saviors of the world is pure and unyielding. It is a mountain of ice that will neither boil, nor melt, nor break. I know the depths of his frozen heart all too well. Uh, wait, does that mean you? Yes. Melchior was raising me to be the shadow for the next leader of the exorcists. Artorius himself. But that was a terrible mistake. I was unable to live up to his expectations. So, if things had gone as he planned, we'd be fighting you instead of Melchior. I'm glad that didn't have to happen. True. If Mogulu was running the Abbey... They would be completely unpredictable. That would be fearsome. Maybe. But doesn't that sound like a whole lot of fun? So Melchior... was my shadow too. Oh, feeling too sympathetic to fight him? I wouldn't say that. There's nothing to be sad about. Removing shadows is part of a shadow's job. Even if I'm a failed shadow, I'm still a witch, and I cast a deeper darkness. Magilu is an absolute trip. And I like how these, a lot of these cutscenes just pop the hell up. Yo, we killing everything over here just because these are the only enemies left in this place before we go outside. Come here. Let me talk to you. Everyone will die. There's absolutely no reason for any of you to live. You guys ain't got no family, you guys ain't got no friends. Well, actually, are these demons friends? 
I mean, they don't attack each other uh, unless they reach a certain level, so to speak. Like, um, the ones who are doing the venomization and whatnot, they will attack and eat other demons just for the hell of it to get stronger. But most of the demons never even consider attacking each other, which is evident by the fact that they're helping each other and not attacking each other. But, um, anyway. What I was talking about before was, um... Like, what is it that determines who becomes what kind of, uh... Hellion in Zysteria, uh, Demon in Berseria. Like, is it their level of malevolence? Is it where they become a demon? Or what? Because these are all supposed to be people. These are not natural creatures. These are all supposed to be people or animals. She really doesn't like these bats. I think that's like the... Isn't that... Oh, that's almost exclusively what she's used her arts on, isn't it? Anyway, um... There's no... There's no natural birth to these creatures, although their birth could technically be argued as natural, considering the fact that they come from um, malevolence, which is naturally created from people. It's kind of like what Grimoire was saying. She was saying that the malevolence that people create is impure by nature, but it is still natural. It is their negative thoughts, their negative emotions, their anger, their sadness. Um, depression, and yes, there is a very big difference between sadness and depression, and all that other stuff. It is that stuff that causes this. We're almost done with this fight. If I were to run away from right now, would these, both of those icons that were on the screen be there, just one of them, or would they both be gone for now? And just respawn later. It doesn't matter, because we're not going to do that, but, um, yeah, no, malevolence is a naturally occurring thing, but only inside of humans. Because apparently, well, if my understanding of malevolence is correct, it is something that is generated from, again, negative emotions. When you have creatures that are living purely by instinct, they don't have any negative emotions, they don't technically have any emotions at all. And when you have, um, ooh, dire foe. Who is it? Who is it? You again? Okay. Yo, I fought this thing before, and now my life is all but gone. Zero impact? This thing is not a freaking... Yo, man, we just did 30 Gs on this chunk. This thing is not armored, so... Oh, I was already armored by the time he showed up, wasn't I? Never mind. Ooh, glider attack, hello. Yo, that did a lot of damage. Could you stop? That did a lot. Have You, you guys haven't seen this one yet, have you? I fought this guy off screen one time. He just showed up. And I found out that there's only like, there's only like four freaking dire foes. I thought there was more than that. I was actually kind of disappointed when I found out how few there were. I thought there was like almost one for every single icon in the game. Did you think you could escape me? But no, he's dead. 139 grade, I'll take it. Oh, I don't think I fought this one in this game though. In this playthrough, rather. I'm pretty sure we didn't. But hey, gold scraps, quartz papers. Longing Ignisite. When no items are received after combat, drop base for the next battle increased by 2% on hard mode or higher. Okay. You're the last one, dude. Oh, in this area. There's a bunch of other fricks down there, but nah. Nah, we're good. You can get the proverbial D, um, in the sense of death. That's what I'm talking about. Don't, don't read too much into it. There's nothing going on. Uh, get the D as you die. What is today? Today is Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, there's no real reason for me to have said that or wondered that. It just popped in my head and I was like, is today Tuesday or Wednesday? Nah, it's Tuesday. Hey, is everyone alright? It was kinda cool that at one point I was kinda wary about Dire Foes showing up and now I've gotten to the point where they show up, I'm like, oh okay. And of course we can run whenever, so. Yep, I can we're outside. See the peak just ahead. If Melchior's anywhere. He's there. Be careful. That crafty old buzzard is nothing like Shigure. He won't fight us head on. Yeah, he won't. But it's fine, because we end up fighting him anyway. Obviously, he's a boss. We've already fought him once before. Mithril earrings. I'll have to check those out. Standard tempering powder. I'll take it. And the expedition is back. Make it happen. I knew oh! Gosh darn it. I did not mean to... I did not mean to... Uh, replica key of Lorelei. What the hell is a Lorelei? Whatever. Go out to the Isle of whoever that was. And let's check out... 
the uh, topaz earrings to the mithril earrings. Ooh. Definitely. That increases her art attack and it increases her art defense. It does lower her physical defense, but I can fix that with herbs. Speaking of, um, it actually does make sense for Monkey Lou to be in here. Miss me that much, did you? She's 619. He's 740. Jesus! But yeah, no. <clears throat> it makes sense for Monkey Lou to be in here. For the next fight, because it's for the exact same reason that Shigure was in the Shigure. That the Rokuro was in the last fight. Uh, with Shigure. Obviously, he's got history with the enemy, and it just, it doesn't make any difference in the storyline, so to speak, but I just, it's weird, alright? I like them to get closure, so to speak. Is victory for us really possible? We're facing the legate, Lord Melchior. I'd give us a round I like how she's worried days. about fighting Lord Melchior, yet this entire our freaking fight, I mean, this entire Almost freaking game, after die, she's joined us, she knows that we're going after Artorias, and Artorias is supposed to be stronger than Melchior, so... Three hearts at once, he'll pull Unless she thought that was a fool's hearts. errand, what has she been he doing this whole time? And he's got far more power. Four to one might be generous. I suppose you're right. However, we have Velvet, the boy, and Rokuro. Who knows what value they'll add when they run amok? It's impossible to calculate, but if luck goes our way, our chances will rise considerably. Right. We are challenging the hardest possible foe. No, but we're not. We you, you've all fight, said that Artorias is stronger than Melchior. No matter how you analyze it, the outlook is grim. Aizen, you too? What's wrong with a level-headed look at things? Careful consideration could give us the tool we need to turn the odds in our favor. After all, Magilu. Forewarned is forearmed, right? Yes, that's true. Even still, we won't find a way. I said it like I asked, Monkey. Another hard look. What we need might be lying right at our feet. At our feet, eh? I'll keep my eyes on the ground as we walk then. Oh, Monkey Lou, you are so literal, or almost as bad as I am. Uh, let's see. We'll kill this lizard frick because he'll see us and then he'll run after us and he's faster than us. I'm sure you guys have noticed. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have noticed he's faster than us. Get destroyed! Get destroyed! We'll die and it'll hurt now. Misty guards, kick his ass. Ooh, get the dick. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Igniter Mole, let me talk to you. See, so getting these power hits right here. Garden 4. It's not that serious. Wow, if you could hit him once, Velvet, I would appreciate it. Stop fooling around. But I'm serious about my fooling around. I like how she went from good job to knock that shit off. Can we we can't go that way. Not now, nor ever. Hold on. Hold on. Is that really all this is? Just the fact that on the map it was kind of... I'm not sure how to say it, but that, that part is there on the map. Made me think that maybe there's something over there. But there's not even a thingamajagger to skip, to jump over. The geo board, the geo tree marker things. And yeah, it looks like I was somewhat correct because it is technically in the next area. Although it's actually two areas away. See, like that, that little mark thing. There's another area down there that we can go to. After we get the Geotree, obviously we're going to go down there and make it do what the hell it do. But for now... <laughs> what kind of noise is that? Like, the noise for these guys and the, um... The, the mole, I guess, I don't, I don't know how the hell these are moles, but uh, the mole type enemy icon things, the, uh, the ape icon things, and the gargoyles i guess the gargoyles are the witches it's one or the other i always victory. yes it could be victory we did good secret agent doll a pitch black guardian that escapes detection by friend and foe i do not think i've seen that before really that decreases none of her stats and increases all of her offense oh my god the wreckage is real. Velvet's at 500 something for both her stats. He's at 742, 652, and 692. So actually, Velvet's still the weakest offensive one that we've got on our main party, so to speak. 
And then Eleanor, wow, our physical attackers are garbage. Leave me be. They're garbage compared to our, um, I was going to say elemental attackers, our, our magical attackers, I guess. You know, it's like, uh, Dark Magician, the most supreme monster to ever exist. And you, it's weird because when Yu-Gi-Oh! first came out, you know, it was basically Team Kaiba or Team Yugi on some Twilight shit. But, um, now obviously we cannot run this fool on the board. You'll never catch me, and I don't owe you any money. I don't care what you say. I'm going to finish exploring this place. Yeah, we're not going to get to Milky Way in this episode. It's already over 30 minutes of recording time for me. Yoink! So, once we explore this, get up there and save the Gizame, as you young cats like to say. Uh, it will have been a lengthy enough episode, for my taste anyway. Yeah, I'll kill y'all on the way back. Don't worry about it. We're not going to kill everybody in here, obviously, because... Damn! There's a lot of y'all. Yo, we found an elixir. Why can't we just, like, mix two elixirs together and big? Hey! Videl, suck on this! This will get rid of your 12-year sickness, obviously, because that's not the way it works. But see, this that's the cool thing about it is I don't think you can actually get any Mega Elixirs in this game, like, to use on your party. So it's fine. But elixirs heal pretty much, if not everything, on any one given character. Can you get up and die, please? Whereas a Mega Elixir will do it for literally everyone in the party. So it makes sense that they turn it into, I guess, kind of like a key item in this game well, instead. Because it. its curative powers are second to nothing in RPGs in general. I don't need all of those kitty clumps. And if I remember correctly, this place is a... just It's just a big circle. So I don't have to worry about... Yeah, so I don't have to worry about going to one side and finding one thing and what the hell else. Why are these kitty clumps sprawled out like that? This is more lengthy than you think it is, is like the first time you get here. Really? I'm I'm really wondering what the hell kind of noise that is. And I saw that item over there, I'm gonna get it. Don't worry. We're not forgetting none of this. Soul bottle. Yo man, that, that alone was worth coming down here. Soul bottles are really important. Leave me be, Dial. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want all that. Am I missing anything else? That one kitty clump can just remain in the darkness for all I give a damn. We came from that way, so we can go this way. Dump all this here. There's really not a whole lot to do in this place besides pick up random crap. I mean, dude, look how many kitty clumps we have. When, when, after we opened up that other one, we had like 140-something to start with, and now we're already back at 350-something. The game needs a lot of kitty clumps to get certain items, um, to get certain of, yeah, to get some of those boxes open. But at the same time, it's... It's ridiculous. They start giving you a, a unreal amount of kitty clumps in these areas. We've already gotten over 200 since we opened that last box. And when you leave the area, the stuff respawns, so there really isn't too much of, like, if you leave the, the level, the stuff respawns. Hold on. That's where we came from, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that the Geo Tree was down here. We'll find out. If I end up wasting my time making a fool out of myself, then, you know, why not? But, no, I'm pretty sure this is where we're supposed to go to advance. What's over here? Treasure chest. I love it. Mithril Talisman. I think he's already had some of those. No, it's new. Decreases his, def his art defense by a lot, so we're not going to mess with that. Like, a lot. That was several hundred, it looked like. Wait, what? I'm thinking about it, that's weird. This was 150, and this doesn't increase his art defense at all. Okay, so it's 150, not several hundred. Still, no thanks. That's overkill in the stat reduction department, bro. I'm not messing with that. Loppy said, if you could learn to drive, I'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate that. Pick that up. Damn it. Yeah, through here is Lord Melky Nuts. So, we are going to end this episode here. And, uh, no, that's just literally it. Thank you all for watching as always. My name is Ray, and these slow mugs will never catch me. But, um, I will see you all next time for part number 73 of Tales of Berseria. But until then, goodbye, everybody. Die!